introducing a plug-in hybrid electric drive system that's retrofitable to existing vehicles, conventional vehicles that are rear-wheel drive, you know, such as a Ford F-150 pickup or four-wheel drive, such as this Jeep Wrangler behind me. How much torque and, and horsepower does it add? Well, if you, when you put this system in, we like to say that the side effect is performance. The fuel economy you get is on average a 60% improvement in city driving fuel economy, but the torque is 350 foot-pounds of torque. And that's from zero RPM all the way up to doing about 80 miles an hour in these vehicles. People don't usually think about an electric vehicle as something that you could rock crawl with. No, and that's why we're, we're kind of changing that, that, or that paradigm that's out there and saying that, look, you can have something really cool, get great fuel economy when you're, you're driving the kids to soccer practice or going to the grocery store, and then you still have the torque and power you want when you're alone crawling up rocks at 24 by 4 work in the off-road, those types of things. So what we've done is uh, we've introduced a switch reluctance electric motor. And the switch reluctance motor has no permanent magnets, so it's a very rugged motor. It, it can fit, it can take the abuse of being located underneath the vehicle near exhaust system components. The heat is not going to make it lose its the magnets, lose magnetization because we have no magnets. It's a fully sealed motor, so you can fully submerge it. On the pickup truck, for example, if you back a boat into your lake, you don't have to worry about, you know, uh, shorting anything out in your battery system or your controller system. Uh, the, uh, it's ruggedized, meets all automotive standards, so it's uh, you know, every standard that Ford, GM, Toyota, everybody else has put out there, this, this system meets all of those specs. It doesn't avoid any warranties except for the warranty for your drive shaft. And there's no, there's no cutting or modifying your vehicle of any type. It's strictly a bolt-in application. And this uh, particular F-150 here at the show, we installed the system for about an hour and a half the show open. Not a long process. Not a long process at all. We've, we've made it that way so it's non-invasive. There's other there's other systems on the market that are out there that are that they literally rip the engine and transmission out of the vehicle, put a smaller engine in, move cross members in the chassis, those type and, and it's a two to three week proposition to do an installation on those. And you know, here within about an hour and a half, two hours, it's a very quick turnaround. Somebody can drop a vehicle off go get coffee, do some shopping or whatever, come back and the vehicle's a plug-in hybrid. Pretty cool stuff. How how far can folks can folks drive in? in uh, with our four kilowatt hour battery pack, you can get about a 20 mile range on the electric driving mode. After the battery reaches about a 40% state of charge, it switches to a Prius-like mode. And what that is, is it, it, it's a charge sustaining hybrid mode where you don't need to, to plug it in to charge it up. The only reason you need to plug it in is when you, if you want that electric only mode where the engine's idling, getting you about 80 to 100 miles per gallon. There's the personal angle, but then there's also the fleet angle. The guy that, the guy that owns 20 F-150s for his, his plumbing company. Right, and then those guys, the average fleet owner drives about 30,000 miles a year on their, on their mid-size pickup truck. So a system like this on that, if you, if you gave these guys 5% improvement in fuel economy, makes a huge difference. So you can imagine what 60% improvement in city driving is going to do for the, for the average fleet owner's bottom line. We've kind of computed it out. In about five years, you're able to, the money you've saved, you're able to buy a, a new truck. So. First two vehicles are the F-150 and the, and the Wrangler? And the Wrangler. And mainly the, first, the, the primary vehicle is the F-150, and we're toying with the idea of doing the Jeep Wrangler. But uh, by next April, you'll see five to ten of these vehicles uh, running around and They'll be showing up at SAE in Detroit. How were you able to do what no one else has been able to figure out? What what was the what was the, the key? We we, uh, we cracked the code on switch reluctance drive technology, and it's a technology that's been around since the 1880s. Nikolai Tesla called it the electric engine at that time because it has the same characteristics of, of an internal combustion engine, such as timing and firing. But those those things have to be controlled by a computer, and of course in the 1880s. The, the computer that we knew of back then was a big mechanical device. You know, there, there was no silicone computers. And so Tesla was way ahead of his time back then. The motor stayed kind of dormant, people trying to do things at different times throughout history when computing technology started appearing. But the issue is because it was so computing intensive, the costs of it were so substantial. But nowadays, you have a $250 desktop computer you know, the, the computing power has come down substantially, so all of these power electronics components have come down in price as well. So we can not only do the motor cost effectively, because the motor itself is hands down 
the lowest cost motor to manufacture in the entire world. But the controller was always the big build. So now we've actually tackled both of those, the controller and the motor. And we've also come up with our unique technology that's patent pending that allows us to distribute this high amperage with low voltage into this motor. So we're, we're, we're splitting 1500 amps and spreading it throughout this motor and controller in, in this system at 48 volts. And what that means to the average person out there is your Toyota Prius is around 288 volts. There is the possibility of getting electrocuted by something with such high voltage. If you're under 60 volts, you'll get a shock, but you're not going to get killed from it. So from a firefighter's perspective with a low water crossing or any other application where there's an accident and they don't want to touch the vehicle until they know the system's disabled, with our systems, you have something that's what we call a volt-safe system. Feel free to touch it, do whatever you want. You're not, you, the worst case, you'll get a big old shock that'll pull your hand away, but you're not going to die. So, and, the, and the battery system and any kind of impacts, any kind of collisions, there's a video on YouTube you can find on the Extreme Power uh, battery. When you look it up, we shot it with a 308 rifle round. Same rounds in an AK-47. Blew a big old hole right through the center of it. Still measures 12.7 volts with a multimeter. We took that same battery and we started a Super Duty diesel pickup truck with it. Not once, but twice. So it's, it's pretty incredible stuff when you think about it. So you have, you have a safe battery technology. You have a robust, safe motor drive technology. Easy installation and ruggedness that's going to last you 10 plus years easy. It, it's hands down, it's, it's the solution everybody's been looking for. The batteries are made here in America, in Oklahoma. The motors and controllers are also made in Texas. So, you know, you know was that the middle south, southwest of the United States? You know, we're trying to keep jobs here in America. And uh, while it's tempting to go overseas for some this kind of technology, what we focused on is what we call this design for assembly, design for manufacturing. That if you build it such that it goes together by itself, it's what they, in the industry they call it the poker yoke method. You have to be able to assemble these things blindfolded with one arm tied behind your back. You know, so we've designed it with all those ideologies built into the whole process such that this can be made in America. You don't have to have sweatshops over in China or, or, or any other place making these motors or these controllers. I mean, the components, we can't control where the electronic components come from. And we buy them from American manufacturers. They probably have them made overseas, but we're doing everything we can in our power to make this thing as close to 100% American made as possible. What makes Extreme Power different from many of the other battery manufacturers like A123? Or well, Extreme Power uses an advanced dry cell battery technology, and it's, it's a lead acid type based technology. And what makes Extreme Power different is Extreme Power is in the energy storage business. And what I mean by that is they focus on systems that are 50 megawatts, huge, massive systems like that, where they have thousands of batteries in these 40-foot shipping containers for the batteries. And Extreme Power has developed this battery technology in the energy storage business, not just for the past few years. They've, this battery technology is, has been a long time coming. Originally, it was, came out of Ford Aerospace. But, uh, so you have a very robust battery technology. You have a battery that can deliver thousands of amps and receive thousands of amps back from it without any uh, damaging effects to the battery. You have a low cost battery technology because it's a lead acid based battery. And you have Extreme Power's uh, financial strength behind it. So with them as a partner in bringing this product to market, you know, there's, it's, uh, we have everything we need to make this product a success. So with, with lead acid technology, it's not like we're dependent on another country like Bolivia. Not at all. Yeah, you're not, you know, the lithium aspects, you know, there's, there's a lot of uh, speculation whether, you know, lithium is hard to mine, hard to get, or whatever. Um, we focused on the fact that there's no rare earth materials in any of the, in the motor drive system or the batteries. So with that in mind, all, the, all your minerals and your materials that go into making the system are available here in America. 